In the studio on my own today, guys. But you know that you've heard the old the, the saying, you put the cart before the horse, right? Is that right? The cart before the horse? I want to talk about that specifically in terms of getting your plane to the next level because so many people do this and I don't want you to do the same. I've got the, uh, I've got my old baby back, or back out of the box anyway. It's my signature series from Overwater, great bass, just sounds fantastic. It's just so nice to get the old, uh, the old bird back out of the case, you know, give her a bit of a test run. I miss this bass, man. I have to play it more. <laughs> What do you think guys as well? Should I use this bad boy in, uh, in more lessons? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Before you get into this lesson, I should say that this has got a high C string on it. So it's strung E, A, D, G, C. So it's like a six string bass. without the B string. I'll be back on the four string next lesson. I just wanted to get this bad boy out and give it, give it a run through. So last week we had Chris Mendoki over from um, Copenhagen. He was recording our first ever upright bass course for Scott's Bass Essence. <laughs> As a bonus, I sat down with Chris, we both had our bases, and I just asked him a ton of questions to do with, you know, how he got from, you know, Copenhagen to moving out to New York when he was 18, uh, playing with the best players in the world, getting the Mike Stern gig, that whole thing, like, and then I drilled down into what is he thinking when he's playing? Is he thinking chord tones? Is he thinking scales? Is he thinking something else? And you know what he came back with? And it's really like, I know this, but it's just so refreshing sometimes to be reminded. So hopefully this lesson to you guys will remind you that the end goal is sometimes not what we think it is. The gag is that so many people get hung up on chord tones and scales, and it is real key to understanding that stuff. It makes, it really makes it a lot easier when you do understand that stuff. But when I asked Chris, I posed the question, I said, what are you thinking? Are you thinking scales? Are you thinking chord tones? He said, I'm not actually thinking any of that. He said, I'm just thinking lines. He said, I'm thinking lines in terms of what chord I'm playing over on that specific moment in time. Let's take a C minor, right? So <clears throat> we've got a C minor tonality. Do you know my chord tones? All over the neck. Oops. I know the scales associated with it. In this t in this case, let's say it was, you know, Dorian. I know all the scales that are associated with the chord that I'm playing over, in this, this case C minor, but when it actually comes to playing over it, I've put in all of the work beforehand to understand the, um, understand the line, understand the chord tones, understand the scales, and then when it comes to actually improvising and playing lines over that, whether it be uh, a solo line or a... So 
sense of kind of baseline, I'm actually not really thinking chord tones. I'm really not thinking scales. I'm thinking lines that I've learned in association with that chord type. So we need to learn lines. We need to get those chord tones, get those scales, construct lines, and then most importantly, memorize the lines. Just like we memorize things that we say. If you come into, if you knock at my door and open, I open the door, right? I don't have to think, oh, what do I say right now to this person that I don't know? I obviously, you know, I open the door and say, hey, how you doing? How can I help you? Memorized phrasing, okay? Memorized phrasing. That's what we're going to do. So you guys need to come up with memorized phrases for each chord type. And you can mix and match them and you don't have to play the same tempo or the same um, rhythmic kind of thing. You can mix them and match them a whole different way. But you need kind of these memorized phrases because they will they'll serve as the, the foundational bedrock of your sound and vocabulary on your instrument, right? So let's take um, a minor, right? And this is the first kind of cool bit of vocabulary I came up with. I didn't come up with it. I discovered when I was a kid, right? So C minor. All I want you to do is play root, third, five, flat seven, and nine. And then back down. Okay, great little cool bit of vocabulary over a minor chord. Could be over an E minor, over an A minor. Okay, it's just a cool little line. Great, so how do we use it over a major chord? Okay, so that's a major chord, C major seven. Again, we just alter the notes accordingly. So we play the root, the major third, normal, uh, natural five, major seven, and nine. Okay, so we've got the minor, we've got the major. Let's do the dominant. Dominant seven, we play root, major third, five, flat seven, nine. Super cool, right? Uh, over the minor seven flat five. <laughs> okay, root, minor third, flat five, flat seven, flat nine. Okay, so there we've got kind of like a really similar line, but over three different um, chord types. So we've got that in our vocabulary and every time you see that chord you make sure you play it and you ingrain it in your in your you know your muscle memory so you just you can hear it before you even play it. So it's a super simple process to come up with cool lines using the same approach over different chord types, right? And then you have to memorize the lines and use them every single time you come across like a minor chord. Use that line, just get it ingrained in your playing. Now let's take a, let's look at something else, you know, just for another example. Again, let's use you have a C minor. What about, um... okay, so that's a C minor. So it's just, um, nine, second, two, minor, third, five, root, nine, minor, third, five, nine, root, flat seven. Now we could do that over a major chord, exactly the same, just change the notes accordingly to the tonality. So on a major chord, it would sound like this. So it's going to be to the major, major third. Okay. Okay, what would it sound like on a dominant chord? So you just have the major third, but the flat seven in there. Remember, I'm, I'm actually sliding to that major third up there as well. So 
So look for lines that you can use. Remember, we're talking about lines here. Look, look for lines, okay, that you can use and then use them on different chord types and learn the changing components within that line to make it fit the chord type. It's a super cool way of getting one bit of vocabulary and then getting four times the amount of information over it. Because you can use it, generally you can use it on minor, well major, dominant, minor, and minor seven flat five. They're the four types of chords that I'm looking to fit this stuff over um, with, with everything I do. So if you take a chord type, like a major tonality, I've got multiple lines that are mine. It's kind of like, they just sound like me that I use over that chord type. That's why when you hear Eric Clapton play, it sounds like Clapton because he's got his lines that he plays. B.B. King, he's got his lines. Pino Palladino, he's got his lines, right? He sounds like that because he's got these signature lines. You need to work on your signature lines. And this, uh, this method will really help you just you know, get the most bang for your buck out of you. Come up with one line and then get that line to fit into different chord types. Now, another thing you can try and do, which I absolutely love, is transcribe other players and then just through the process of transcription, you're going to learn how they're approaching their lines and then you can get that stuff and use it in your own lines. You don't have to rip off their lines completely. Generally, we, will, we won't sound like those guys anyway. We'll end up sounding like ourselves. So get those lines from those players, get it into your own playing and make it your own. So for instance, like that old Pino. Now, like Jacko did that back in the day, right? But Pino kind of made it his own. He's got this, he's got this like. Like me, I just associate that with Pino, but if you watch the Jacko video, He's all over it, man. He's, he's using them double stops. So it didn't come from Pino, but Pino got it from somewhere. He didn't just come up with this on his own, right? He heard, he probably heard Jacko do it and thought, damn, that sounds great. I'm going to get it into my vocabulary. So I just want to end this lesson, guys, and just say that remember that the chord tones are super important. It's really important that you can, you can visualize your harmony over the neck. That's, you know, it's just part of learning the instrument. Again, scales, learn this stuff, but it's not the end goal. There's an end goal that's after that, and that is when you're gonna get the chord tones, get the scales, start creating lines out of it, start learning lines, start memorizing lines, and most importantly, start using them to make great music, right? Learn these lines and make great music with it. Okay, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. As always, if you've not checked out scottsbasslessons.com, go and do so. And you can grab a 14 day free trial and check out the ultimate online bass school and uh, our insane faculty that we're so lucky to have. Got some amazing courses coming up. In fact, we're releasing this, we're releasing one this coming month with the amazing Jonathan Marin. <laughs> who was the, uh, the bass player with Maxwell. If you guys in the know, you'll know who Jonathan is. And uh, yeah, so anyway, take it easy guys. I'll see you in the shed. Whoa, 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 where are you going? If you haven't subscribed to the Scots Bass Lessons channel yet here on YouTube, click the link, subscribe. I release two videos like this every single week. You can also check out our other videos over there. And if you've not checked out scotsbasslessons.com membership, check it out. You can grab your 14 day free trial over there.